Good morning, everyone out there, wherever you are in the world. We want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We praise God for all that he is doing inside of each of our lives. We give God all the honor. We give God all the praise for the great, the marvelous, and magnificent things that he's doing inside of each of our lives. And I don't know about you today, but I'm just so excited just to, just to be here in, in the house of the Lord one one more time that we may celebrate that we may celebrate the risen Savior. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 So God is with us today. He is uh, sitting high. He's looking low. And I, I just want to uh, begin today just by uh, giving God all of the honor for how he has uh, what us this far down through all these years and so I like to read down the book of Psalms Psalm number one uh, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful for his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law does he meditate day and night and he shall be like a tree Planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'll say it once again. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yeah. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 We praise God for all of that he's doing. We thank God for all that he is going to do inside of our lives in the name yeah. of Jesus. Amen. And we give God all the glory, all the honor. He is worthy of all the praise. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Oh, Lord God, we thank you even at this hour. We invoke the presence and the power, indeed the anointing of the Holy Spirit to come be with us during this time of worship, or during this time of praise, where we magnify and we glorify your holy and your righteous name. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Lord, how you have come down through these 42 generations. And as we enter now into the fourth week of Advent, where we talk about peace and love, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying and shedding your blood that we can enjoy the right to eternal life. Bless those persons who are here at Servants for Christ Baptist Church. Thank you, Lord God. Uh, bless those that are watching us on Facebook. Amen. Amen. Uh, bless those who are watching from around the world. We give you all praise and all glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask uh, Deacon uh, Damon if he would come and uh, give us the morning prayer for the church. Father, Lord Jesus, for this wonderful day that you blessed us with to wake up this morning and to get up out that bed, Lord Jesus. We honor you, Father. Yes. We thank you for all your love and peace that you give us. Thank you, Lord. Please forgive us for all the sins that we've done. Yes. Father, Lord, bless the house. Take your time. Bless the pastor, Father, yes. Lord Jesus. Bless the world. We love you, Father, Lord. We love you so much. You died for us, Lord Jesus. In your name, Father, Lord. We love you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. We praise your name, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. I thank you for everything you do for me. To yes. see another year. Yes. To wake up, not to have COVID. Bless Amen. the world. Bless everyone. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you. Amen. 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 We thank you. We praise God. 
God for that beautiful prayer this morning. And we give God all of the honor for all the great things that he is doing inside of our life. My brothers and sisters, today we want to get right to it. We want to thank God for each one of you who are here with us. And we just want to praise your holy and your righteous name on how you have blessed us, anointed us, how you have consecrated us in the name of Jesus. Amen, somebody. Amen. This is indeed the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice in this day. I just want to say, uh, first of all, I want to thank the, um, the members of the Deliverance Church in uh, Liberia for allowing me to come on this morning and preach to the church in Liberia and give uh, some opening remarks, as well as the church for the members in the church in Liberia, Africa. It was truly a great experience to get up at 5.30 in the morning and preach to people in Africa. We thank God for that great opportunity. And I want to thank God for all the people who are members of the Gospel Truth Global International Incorporated. If you're interested in the Gospel Truth Global International Incorporated, you can look at gospeltruthinc.org. That's www dot gospel truth dot org. And if you want to reach service for Christ uh, uh, Church here in Fort Washington, Maryland, you can very easily reach service for Christ Church by going to our website, which is service for Christ inc dot org. Service for Christ inc dot org. And we just want to thank God and give Him praise for all that He has done. As we are entering into the Advent season celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There's a scripture that comes to mind, and that scripture is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9. And in that scripture, it tells us in verse number 6 the prophetic word. The prophetic word is as follows in Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. For to us, a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. If those are the names and the titles that were ascribed to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ over 700 years before he was born. Almost 729 years before he was born, a prophecy was given. And uh, my brothers and sisters, that prophecy was fulfilled in uh, the book of Luke chapter 2. And in the book of Luke chapter 2, the following words are uh, written for our understanding. In verse 1 it reads, And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Cornelius was governor, governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. There the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping uh, watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, 
and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And that is enough right there to understand the advent of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As Christians, we are going to pause on the 25th of December. And we are going to pause to celebrate the birth of our God Amen. into the earth. Because we know that there has never been a time when God did not exist. He is from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. And the question comes, what is Christmas all about? Why do we pause and celebrate Christmas? One of the most profound ideas that I've come to realize and understand is that there are many ethnicities in this country and around the world who do not believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, refuse to accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as the great I am that I am, as Alpha and Omega, refuse to accept that Jesus Christ was born into the world as the Savior of the world, for all people, whoever would accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, as the Son of God, the one who came and did so many miracles that the books in history and, amen, not only that, but the Bible did not even record all of the miracles of that he made known to man while he was here, the things that he did on this earth, healing those that were lame causing those that were blind to see. Amen, amen, amen. Causing infirmities to go away. Jesus Christ did so much. Amen. And then on top of all that, he died on the cross at Calvary, suffering for your sins and my sins. Amen. So this Christ of Christmas that we're celebrating on December the 25th, Amen. Amen. We're not celebrating the giving of gifts, which is what the my guy gave to Christ upon coming to visit him. We're not celebrating an automobile. Mm -hmm. We're not celebrating how much money one may have. What we're celebrating is the Savior of the world being born. Amen. The Christ of Christmas. Isaiah uh, 9, 6, as I mentioned in the opening scripture, is one of the most remarkable prophecies concerning Christ's first coming that we find in Old Testament literature. The careful, careful examination of this verse within its context will reveal that its true, its true spans throughout all ages not only in the prophetic word of 700 B.C., but even now in 2022, the same prophetic word that was given during that time, 700 years before the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, applies even right now that a Savior has been born mm -hmm. into the world. Every period of history, from the beginning of time until the universal reign of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, hallelujah, uh, uh, comprehend this majestic title of the Lord Jesus Christ. The pre-existent son was born into the human family in order that he might become the wonderful counselor. Amen. That he may become the mighty God the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The titles 
ascribed to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as he came into being so that we may know him in this life that we're in right now. It is a big deal. It is indeed a very, very big deal. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah uses these words of this prophecy to describe the reign of Christ over people emancipated out of terrible bondage and unspeakable darkness. It's something to think about. The final fulfillment of this great utterance has yet to be realized when Jesus Christ shall reign where the Son does his successive journey run. Meanwhile, we can know the transforming experience that Christ has inside of our lives. The wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. And so, my brothers and sisters, I, I want to uh, review with you some of the uh, ideas that really come out of these titles that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been ascribed by the scriptures and by Isaiah, the prophet, who prophesied as it was fulfilled in the book of Luke, just with what I have just uh, read to you. And today, you, you know, when we stop and we pause to celebrate what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did, we need to reflect upon who God is. Yes. That's right. In other words, Jesus Christ is not some animated figure in history. He's not some doormat that we can walk right over and act like he does not even exist in history. Mm -hmm. He's the fulfillment of the divine plan of our God who looked down through all these years and saw us in bondage and in slavery and decided to send his only begotten son mm -hmm. into the world that we might have life and that we might have life more abundantly. That's right. That's right. Amen. My brother and sister, somewhere along the way, the message of Jesus Christ has escaped many people throughout the world. Yes. When our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came and did 29 years before he began his earthly ministry, and when he began his earthly ministry, he, he acted out all of the titles that had been ascribed to him. Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, yes. Everlasting Father. All right. and, and what did he do with all of that, my brothers and sisters? He also had many, many other names that were ascribed to the work that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did as he came to serve as the perpetuation disciple Christ. Now, I want to make this uh, very, very clear that our God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, did some miraculous things as he came to heal us and deliver us. He, he cleansed the lepers and he healed a century servant's paralytic and he healed Peter's mother and he healed the sick at evening. And hallelujah, he raised uh, the ruler, Jared's daughter from the grave. Amen, somebody. Amen. He healed a man's withered hand. And he fed the 5,000. Amen. With five loaves and, and, and two fish, he fed 5,000. Yes. Yes. And he did much, much more. Amen. The mighty God. In fulfilling his purposes, the mighty God, we see, hallelujah. Uh, that, that, that Christ, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, had the power over creation. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, at the third verse, the Bible says, let there be light. Mm -hmm. And it was light. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Then God went forth and he created the stars and the moon and 
He created uh, the firmament and he created animals after their kind and after their kind. Amen, somebody. And he Amen. created, on the sixth day, he created Adam and Eve. Yeah. And all the species. He said it was all good. Christ is, has the power as sustainer mm -hmm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. Christ can sustain us that no matter what type of situation that we are addressing or going through inside of our lives, our glory, God, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ can sustain us through whatever it is that we're going through. That's his power. Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's power rests in Christ as being the Redeemer. He redeems us. Once we accept our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as our Savior, he redeems us uh, uh, and, and sanctifies us because we have accepted Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why in the book of Acts chapter 1-8, when Jesus Christ teaches us to go ye therefore into all the world, and don't do anything until you are endued with power from on high. Amen. Christ's power allowed him to come to earth as a baby, being wrapped in swaddling clothes. Amen, somebody. Amen. Christ's power to live on earth allowed him to be here on earth and not just sitting up in heaven on a high throne that he had known from the beginning of time even until now where he still rests on a high throne, high and lifted up. Amen. Christ's power allowed him to work on earth and Christ's power allowed him to rise on the earth and have a name that is above every other name that at the name of Jesus yeah. that every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess. Christ's power yeah. to save on the earth, you and I, and for many of us who will accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Yes, my brothers and sisters, I, hallelujah. He, he is of the mighty God. Somebody ought to say he is the mighty God. Amen, somebody. And then he was also ascribed with the title, the everlasting Father. The final head of a new revelation according to the book of uh, 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 Isaiah chapter 9. Verse 6 is what it tells us. Yeah. It says very clearly, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, mm -hmm. the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, he is the father of eternal life in our lives. Yes, he is. For those of us who accept our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when we cross over into eternity, God is standing there, amen, somebody, amen. in the midst of the darkness, some place that we've never seen with his hand outstretched and saying, well done, my good and faithful servant, uh, uh, that you've been faithful over a few things, amen, somebody, amen. and now I'm going to bring you into the rest of the Lord, amen, somebody. Amen. He is the father of eternal life. He is the father of eternal love. That's why the book of John teaches us uh, very clearly that God so loved the world that he gave uh -huh. his only begotten son. And he's the founder head of a new religion, the word of the father, according to James 1.22. He, he does the work of the father, God almighty. He is the federal head of the new race. And He's, he, is, uh, uh, he, he is one that helps us to believe in the everlasting Father. Yeah. You should receive the everlasting Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. We said that there was no room in the end for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. I'm asking you today, is there any room in your heart yeah. for Jesus? Will you accept him as your Lord and Savior? Yeah. Our theme for next year is to uh, recommit and rededicate. Rededicate and recommit. Is there room for you to recommit your life, to rededicate your life to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? 
the author and finisher of your faith. Yeah. If you have any room for Jesus, may your request be, oh, come into, come to my heart, Lord Jesus. Yeah. There's room in my heart for thee. Is there room inside of your heart? Yeah. Yeah. The Christ of Christmas also is, is ascribed to him a few of the titles. It's the Prince of Peace. Jesus said that, my peace I leave with you. Mm -hmm. There are many people in the world today that have no peace. Yeah. They have no comfort. Even in their own home, they have no peace. Yeah. The only way that you can have peace is that you must have our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, standing right there with you by your side each moment of each day and ask and pray that God will never depart from you. Somebody say, God, please don't depart from me. God, God please, please don't, don't depart, depart from me. me. Not only that, my brothers and sisters, of the four titles given to our Lord Jesus Christ, this one is the greatest. For it speaks to the deepest need of the human heart. The true person sang and sighed for the common prince of peace. The prince of peace. Yeah. We can't even leave our automobile. For one moment, lest someone is damaging it. That's right. Side swiping. Yeah. Breaking into your car. Yeah. Stealing everything that you've worked so hard for. Uh -huh. Breaking into your home. Yeah. Stealing your loved one's heart from you. Yeah. Okay. Lying, cheating, committing all sorts of sin against a most holy God. Yeah. And only Christ can bring us peace. He's the author of peace. Yes, he is. He's the prince of peace. Yes, he is. Jesus brought peace in his birth. Yeah. Jesus taught peace in his life. According to John 16, 33. Jesus brought peace by his death. According to Colossians 1, 20. The enmity that was found in the book of Genesis chapter 3, 15. When God said, I will put enmity between thee and you will bruise his heel and I will bruise his head. When Jesus Christ died on the cross at Calvary, the curtain was rent in the temple. Yeah. And he brought peace. Yeah. He gave us everlasting peace with God the Father Almighty. Somewhere along the line, there's been some confusion. Somewhere along the line, folks have stopped preaching about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and what his birth means to mankind across the world. Somewhere. God, in this dispensation, has sent out witnesses. Thank God that he has chosen me as one of those witnesses that is willing to go into the world and propagate the gospel of Jesus Christ so that men will know the truth and that the truth will set them free. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus taught us peace in his life. Yeah. When they spit on him, when they beat him, Ripped his flesh wide open. He asked, what have I done wrong? Mm -hmm. I've been very transparent. I've spoken everything in the open. I've done nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. If I've done something wrong, tell me. Then no one could say anything except you claim to be the son of God. And you have done perdition against the state. All lies. All lies. Satan wanted to attack our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to have him crucified because he knew that Jesus Christ was the answer to human suffering. He knew that Jesus Christ was the answer to us having the opportunity to live eternal life with God. Jesus is the arbitrator of peace. 
the personal life of the Christian is all because of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He arbitrates that peace with God the Father. Whereas he ascended into heaven, he was seated at the right hand of God the Father and served as the mediator, the priest, and the prophet, as well as king. Jesus Christ gives us the general life of the church. I was over at my friend Dr. Freddie Davis Church last week at the Ministers Conference and Dr. Davis gave a powerful sermon about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And somewhere in the midst of that sermon he said that one of the trustees came to him or some member and said you don't know what's going on around here pastor in your church. He said uh -huh. you don't understand. This, this church belongs to Christ. That's right. mm -hmm. I'm the under shepherd. Mm -hmm. Only person need to know what's going on around in the church is Christ. Amen. I'm a servant. I declare to you today that here at Serving for Christ, I'm a servant. This church belongs to God. Amen. And we thank God for allowing us to serve for as long as he has in these circumstances. Yeah. We're so grateful. So honored, so privileged that now God has given us the world as our pulpit. No greater honor can be bestowed upon us, Amen. serving for Christ, Amen. to have that honor as our church. Amen. Jesus Christ is the authentic and authenticator of peace. No matter what period of time that we are in, no matter what dispensation that we are in, Jesus Christ is there authenticating the peace that he has given to us. Jesus Christ is the eternal age of peace. And eternity of peace is the concept almost beyond human comprehension. It sums up everything that human heart longs for. If, if we are to be uh, sharers in all that is implied and involved in this title, we must open our whole being to this Prince of Peace who came at Christmas time to make peace, gave peace, and preached peace. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. Amen. If you want peace, in your life, I beg you, I plead with you to accept Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross for you and I, yes. the one who shed his blood so that you and I could have the right to eternal life, the one who is the great I am of that I am, the one that is the Alpha and Omega. Amen, somebody. He's the almighty before whom every knee shall bow. Yeah. He gave his life as a sacrifice on our behalf. Amen, somebody. Amen. Uh, he brings hope in the midst of darkness. And his power and presence exemplify the living God. Uh, he is the unique, one-of-a-kind son of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. He is a faithful proclaimer of the truth of God. He delivers from sin and death. He is the mediator of God's covenant. He identifies with us in our humanity. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Not only that, he healed the blind man at Bethesda. He did a catch of fish. Amen. He raised the widow's son and dumb. He healed the infirm man. He cleaned the ten lepers. Amen. I said, Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to say, Hallelujah. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus, for your magnificent, marvelous works. Because why? Because you are the Prince of Peace. That's enough for you right there to go home. Yeah. Open up your Bible and read it. And thank God for all the magnificent work that he has done. Yes. I'm going to ask, ask you all, amen, to stand where you are, sit where you are. For those of you that are 
on television, wherever you are today. We give God all the praise you want to have. We ought to call. Stand where you are. And so, Lord God, here we are. Coming to you, the author and finisher of our faith. Perhaps there's someone out there today. As they should say in North Carolina. If you don't know him man, for the pardon of your sins, today is a good day to get to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today is a good day where you can turn your life over to him. Today is a good day where you can say, Lord God, I yield, I yield, I yield my life to you. Today is a good day where you can stop the foolishness and say, Lord, I have said before you, when Jesus Christ came on the scene, he said to all of us, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Do not let your heart be hard. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus Christ is standing at the door right now waiting on you with his arms open. Let us bow. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you for the Christ of Christmas. We thank you, God, for the Prince of Peace. How you loved us so much. How you gave your only begotten Son, amen. That through him we might live an everlasting life. We are so grateful to you, dear God. And there are those out there, even now, whose hearts have been hardened. We beg, plead, and pray that you will loosen their hearts. And during this final week of Advent of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is bringing us peace and love as we memorialize him, we give you all the honor, all the praise, all the glory for the great, magnificent, and marvelous things that you have done. Now, Lord, there are those who are at the altar, those who need your love, those who need your impartation, those who need your impact in their lives, those who aren't sure that you are the great I am that I am. In Jesus' name, we give you all honor. For we know that we can go back to that old song that but look where he's brought me from. Yes, he's brought me out of darkness. And you, out of darkness, into the marvelous light. Yeah. We praise your holy and righteous name that we ask your blessings upon the finances of the members of this church. Upon the health of the members of this church. Upon the minds of the members of this church. Upon the protection of the members of this church. Upon the love that they have in their lives and their loved ones. Upon the members of this church. But not only us. But all of our friends throughout the world. Jesus Christ, we thank you. We love you. We honor you and we reverence you. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive honor and glory. For thou hast created all things, and for thy purpose they are and were created. We honor you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Come, be with us. Help us. Guide us and teach us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Bless these at the altar. Anoint them, consecrate them with your love, your peace. The charge today is to go in peace and understand that Jesus Christ is the author and finisher of our faith as we go in peace. In his name we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 Now to him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us false before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. <laughs>